Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again, and thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. And as you can see, one of our favorite guests is here, Dr. Liz Lister. Dr. Liz, good to see you. Likewise, thank you. Uh, Dr. Liz, one of the, we've been on a lot of fascinating journeys through hormone land with you <laughs> over the last uh, uh, year. I think that we've been uh, shooting these segments and talking to you. But uh, one of the most fascinating things, and we were always looking for a way to uh, expand upon that, is that you actually were on a fascinating journey to Africa. And uh, that was a very special, uh, I don't know whether bucket list item for you or what it was, but uh, it was a very exciting thing that's on your website. Can you tell us a little bit more about how all that came about? Absolutely. I love visiting Africa, especially East Africa. When I turned 50, I climbed Kilimanjaro. We've talked about that, I think. Mm -hmm. That was, that's a fun topic we could talk about another time. And I was very fortunate last year to be able to travel with uh, a friend that my husband and I met through our Toastmasters group. He is someone who has created a nonprofit called H2 Open Doors. He travels around the world with groups of people installing solar and wind powered water purification systems. It's absolutely wow. fascinating. Yeah, the device itself is called the Sunspring. That's really wonderful. And this was a trip to Kenya that we decided to join. So when you say you decided to join, was this a, a Toastmaster related trip? More actually through Rotary International. Oh. Our friend also is very involved with Rotary International. And we actually subsequently have joined the, one of the clubs that he helped found here in our area in Northern California. He organizes these trips to various countries. He's been to the Philippines, to India. He's been to Mexico, Guatemala, of course, Kenya several times. He's working on getting to a lot of other places. When he organizes these trips, he invites people to come along as well, sort of a volunteerism mm. type of opportunity. We were able to do a couple of things. He always goes back a year later to make sure everything's working well. The Sunspring installations that he does always include a micro enterprise component for the what local is? village. Oh. Right, exactly. So, so that not only are they getting fresh water, but they're also getting some way of uh, delivering this water to the neighboring communities. It's just really, really wonderful to see. So we were there for rechecking an installation that he had done the previous year in the coastal area of Kenya, which, by the way, is absolutely beautiful. All right. It's just really, really something, the coastal area of Kenya. A lot of people don't even know it's so beautiful. It's actually up the coast from Zanzibar. <laughs> just to give you a little idea. Yeah. So we were rechecking an installation that had been done there before. And while we were there, I was... Uh, lucky and blessed to have the opportunity to do some volunteering with another organization that he is affiliated with called Safari Doctors, who go around to the very remote villages that can only be reached by boat. There are some, there's an archipelago of islands there. And I was able to actually see some patients while I was there with an interpreter, of course. I do not speak Swahili. It was absolutely really, really a wonderful experience. That was the first part of the trip. And the second part was in the Maasai Mara, more inland in Kenya, where we actually did another sun spring installation where we launched it, connected it to all the pipes. And all the prep work had been done previously. A lot of prep work had been done. And we were there when it was turned on for the first time. It was a big celebration with the community and community leaders. It was very exciting. Uh, what a uh, wonderful experience! That so is your your husband. Is it, he involved in this professionally? Is that what he does? Create water systems and things like that, or it's just just sort of like a hobby of his? This is we want to give back. We we already realized how lucky we are. 
a lot of what we have in our lives is, uh, as our friend John says, who started the H2 Open Doors nonprofit that does these water installations, uh, he's, he likes to say, we have a lot of what we have in our lives by accident of birth. Mm. And people in other parts of the world, by accident of birth, just due to their location of where they were born, have access to so much less than what we have. And so my husband, Michael, and I, we just want to give back. This is That was what prompted us to join Rotary and inspire us to go on these trips. So we're hoping to be able to go on more. Of course, we've had everyone's travel plans have been scuttled quite a bit over this past year. But sure. we're looking forward into the new year to be able to go on another some of these trips. So besides, besides uh, having a local supply of water, uh, uh, it, uh, this whole activity sort of conjures up uh, women, primary women or, or little kids going down to the river and putting a bucket of water on their head and walking back. So besides having it local, uh, is it also used uh, to help with agriculture or maybe cure issues? Do issues like cholera get uh, minimized because of that? Uh, is yes. That, that's it's a, more than that. Yeah. Can you explain yes. a little bit about how Ab uh, what, what the effect is? Yeah, you hit it right on the head, Art. It's for the local use of fresh, safe drinking water. You know, you and I, we walk over to our faucet, we open the tap, and number one, we expect water to come out. Number two, we expect it to be clean. And for the most part, it's drinkable. We're not going to get sick. Whereas in a lot of parts of the world, they do not have that privilege that we have. They do exactly what you were saying. Uh, in the areas where we were, in the Mara, this is a place where a lot of people go on safari, which we got to see all, we got to go on safari almost every day for a week while we were there. It was absolutely beautiful and incredible to see the majesty and all of these animals in nature. However, for the day-to-day -day life of the people who live in these small villages and towns, Going, that's exactly what they do. They go down to the river. They're collecting muddy, dirty water. They are frequently, frequently battling illnesses, uh, gastrointestinal disorders due to the organisms that grow in this non-purified, completely unprocessed water. Also, it can be dangerous to go to the river. There, in the area where we were in particular, in the Mara, there have been it's not that rare everyone knows somebody who was hurt or killed by an elephant in the process of trying to gather water from a nearby stream or river a lot of the animals are competing for the water supply right so they're they're going through the dangers of collecting the water they're doing exactly what you said they're dipping a bucket into the water they don't have any way to separate it from the other, the organisms or the mud. They're carrying it on their head. And on top of that, they're actually distributing it and collecting a little bit of money. I mean, it's, it'll be pennies compared to what we are used to. However, people are actually paying for that water to be brought to them. So now uh -huh. with the Sunspring installation, they're actually going to be able to pay the same few cents and actually get drinkable water that isn't going to make them sick. I know that you're doing uh, the kinds of things uh, that you've been involved in through your husband and, and other things uh, uh, that are of interest to you in your life. Do you know if there are any organizations on volunteerism? Yes, there are many. It's easy to look on Google and choose what a part of the world interests you to go and see. It's a little bit controversial, I have to say. I've, I've done this kind of looking up on the internet uh, to see what I could find. Sometimes, if it leans a little more on the tourism side, it, it's a mixed blessing for the locals in the parts of the world, right? Sometimes they want the tourism. However, we have to be careful what kind of impact we're making while we're there, right? We weren't doing anything like trying to touch any of the wild animals or anything like that. So, there are lots of organizations. There's a there's a website called Charity Navigator, which is a great place to look, which you can get a lot of information about particular nonprofits when you're considering whether to donate to them or to travel with them. A lot. I love the uh, I love the word volunteerism. 
uh, I think that's that's a great uh, description of what it is. You learned a lot uh, by going to this third world country. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. It was absolutely amazing. And it made me ask myself the question, what is our role? What is our duty? Do we have an obligation to people who are less privileged than we are? I personally think that we do have that obligation. People have different thoughts and feelings about that. Uh, however, it definitely left me asking that question. Well, that's what? a good question to ask. I think it's a question uh, everybody needs to ask. You know, how do yeah. we help our fellow man? Yeah, and, and there are plenty of opportunities for domestic help as well, whether it's uh, Red Cross or whether it's uh, 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 doing blood bank and things like that or in disaster relief. So there are lots of charities, of, lots, lots of and charities. lots of charities in the U.S., yeah. One more comment about Africa in particular. Mm -hmm. Africa has a beautiful cultural concept called Ubuntu, which means loosely translated, I am because you are. It basically is an emphasis on community. For me, that's such a beautiful comparison and contrast, especially here in the United States. We're all about rugged individualism and we have to do it on our own. Whereas we really do rely on each other. We just have this sense that we're supposed to do everything by ourselves. Whereas where I've traveled in Africa, it's just been so wonderful to see the way villages function as a whole, as a group. It's really lots of lessons to learn there. Yeah. Well, good. Thank you for sharing that. It's a wonderful, you obviously had a wonderful time. Uh, a great trip, and now I feel like I've learned something too. Well, then, John, see ya. <laughs> Don't forget to write. <laughs> anyway, thank you, uh, Dr. Liz, again for sharing something on your more personal side that you do. Uh, we Welcome. we know of a lot of wonderful things that you do, but uh, this was really uh, exciting, and thank you for that. And look forward to seeing you again soon. Likewise. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.